What's up guys, Travis from americantrucks.com and today we're trying to figure out how you can easily and affordably add some power to your aging 04 to 08 Triton powered F-150. Now if you're watching this video, you've probably figured out by now that colder intakes are pretty much the number one way to go about this, but there's a ton of options available, so why this one in particular? Well this is K&N's FIPK Series 57 cold air intake and this is compatible with any Triton powered F-150 from 2004 to 2008. And at around $300, this is also one of their most affordable options currently available for this truck. And honestly guys, k &N really needs no introduction. They've been around longer than I've been alive and they're pretty much the number one name in the entire industry when it comes to induction and colder intakes for this truck and pretty much any vehicle. So if you stick with this one, you're pretty much getting one of the most popular options available. But why is that? Well, this is not the least expensive option that you can find in general. However, it's got a lot of stuff going for it that would make it the top choice for me personally. Number one, it's CARB certified, which means that it's street legal in all 50 states. If you guys live in places like California, especially recently, you're probably well aware of how much of a pain in the ass it can be trying to mod your vehicle and stay on the good side of the law. That's going to be the case here with this guy because he's certified for all 50 states. Other thing to consider is whether you need to tune your vehicle. These guys run on MAF sensors. Usually when you throw a new intake in there, you got to do some changes to the PCM that can get pretty involved and pretty expensive. However, k &N really takes their time to uh, develop these so that you don't have to get a tune on your truck. So you can pretty much throw this in place, make some horsepower and torque, and you'll be set. Uh, other options that might be less expensive than this might require a computer tune. Now, what kind of performance could you get out of an intake like this? Well, k &N actually pretty much guarantees that you will make additional horsepower and torque with any intake that they sell. I can't speak to that personally because we did not dyno this thing, but I can pretty much say with confidence you guys will see something like single digit gains, maybe some low double digit gains. And what's nice about these intakes is they usually add uh, pretty nice curve gains. And that's what you're really going to feel when you're kind of driving around on the city streets in third or fourth gear. You're kind of cruising maybe between 2,000, 3,000 RPM, you mash on the pedal. That's where this guy's really going to make a difference, right? And last thing to consider is the install. These are very easy to install because again, they don't require a tune and there's really no modification necessary. And Anything that you might have to change under the hood is included in the kit, so it makes for a bolt-on job, and for that reason, I'm gonna give the install a very soft one out of three wrenches on my difficulty meter. Honestly, guys, it shouldn't take you more than an hour, maybe two hours to get this done, and I'm actually gonna help you out with that. That makes this a great first mod. So again, if you wanna make some really easy horsepower and torque gains, but you're not interested in tuning your truck, and you wanna stay street legal, then k and Series 57 intake is gonna be the intake for your Triton motor. And if you guys decide to pull the trigger on this one, like I said, come back in a little bit, I'll show you what tools you need to get out of the box, and then I'm gonna walk you through the entire install step by step. All right guys, before we get started, you'll need a couple of standard drive ratchets. You're also gonna need an eight, 10, 13, and 14 millimeter socket. I would recommend having deep sockets for those. You'll need a 10 millimeter wrench. You'll also need a Phillips head screwdriver or Phillips head bit or socket a 5 30 seconds Allen key or Allen head socket, and a two millimeter Allen key. You'll also need some snips for your weather stripping and optional but helpful tools include a couple of extensions, a T20 Torx bit, an impact gun, and an impact swivel socket. All right guys, first step of our uninstall here, we have to disconnect some things from our uh, air box here. We're gonna disconnect our MAF sensor, go ahead and pull the red tab, give it a squeeze, and pull it free. All right, next we're gonna pull this breather hose off the passenger side here, you see this little green tab? Go ahead and push down on that and then pop it free. Now there might be one of these connections on the opposite side as well. If there is another breather hose on that side, go ahead and do the same thing. All right, next we're gonna loosen up our air box. There's four bolts securing it, two on either side here. You see these little studs. You need a 10 millimeter deep socket to remove these. Now these are sitting in a plastic housing, guys, and there can be some corrosion on there. It's helpful to spray those down. All right, last we're gonna remove this bolt. This is actually securing the intake tube inside the engine bay. It's a 10 millimeter bolt, so you can use that same socket. And once you've removed this bolt, you can pull the entire intake assembly from underneath the hood. All right, if your truck is equipped with this support bracket from that bolt we just removed, You'll need to pull this bracket off of here. This is secured with two 13 millimeter nuts, so you'll need a 13 millimeter socket.
So once you've removed that bracket, you want to put one of those nuts back on the bottom mounting stud and tighten it back down. Alright guys, next we're going to remove our throttle body, but before we pull the four bolts securing it to the intake manifold, we have to get rid of this little sensor right here. So go ahead and pop this little rubber cap up, pop that little cap up right there as well, give it a good press, and disconnect it. Alright, once that out of the way, you can remove the four bolts securing the throttle body, and it's that same 10 mil socket. All right, now once you pull the throttle body up, there's also a second connection right here, same process. Go ahead and press that red tab and pull it free. All right guys, now that our throttle body is removed, we can install the elbow that's gonna secure our throttle body to our intake manifold. Now if you've been following along the instructions with the video, they tell you to install the throttle body on the elbow first, but guys, it's a lot easier to actually install the elbow on the manifold. It gives you a little bit more space so you can get these bolts in here. Now you're securing the elbow to the manifold with the four hex bolts provided in the kit. They also have flat washers and crush washers and they use 10 millimeter flanges so you can get away with using a 10 millimeter socket or a wrench. It is a pretty cramped space in here so you'll probably need to use a wrench. It's helpful to have a ratcheting wrench for these. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can get our gun on here. All right guys, now we're gonna seat our throttle body on here. We're reusing those bolts we removed and we have to put a gasket on here. So, little trick to do this, put the two top bolts on the throttle body and then get the gasket on there and then get these guys hand threaded. It's gonna make sure that gasket lines up so you don't have any leaks. Alright, once you got all those hand threaded, you can drive them home with your 10 mil. Alright, once the throttle body's been installed, you can reconnect all of your electrical connections. All right guys, we have our factory intake system removed. I wanted to throw this up here real quick next to our new system. That way you guys can see what a nice improvement k and makes over our factory setup. There's really no better phrasing to say this. This thing looks ridiculous, right? It looks kind of ugly, it's kind of stupid. It looks like a weird spaceship or something like that. And then you also got this paper element filter in here. This is definitely not worthy of a 5.4 motor. So, we got our new high flow filter here. This guy's cool, he's washable, reusable, good for up to 100,000 miles. Now, before we ditch our old and busted here, we do have to pull our MAP sensor out of here. They do provide a little Torx key, but this is a T20 Torx bit. So if you have a Torx set handy, go ahead and pop that free. All right, now when you go to pull the MAP sensor, if you're using your own sockets or bits, you wanna use hand tools, because these are threaded into plastic threads and they're very easy to strip out. We are not reusing these Torx bit uh, screws, by the way, so once you pull the MAP sensor, you can discard these. All right guys, now we're gonna install the MAF sensor into the intake tube using this adapter plate in the kit. You want the K&N logo on the adapter plate to be facing outside, and you also want the little diode here on the MAF itself to be facing towards the inlet of the intake tube. Now, once you've done that, go ahead and rest all this inside the intake tube, and you're gonna grab these little Allen head bolts in the kit. They're kind of distinguishable because they have a little bit of a gunmetal color to them. You'll also need the crush washers for these. In order to secure this stuff, you'll need a 5 30 seconds Allen key or Allen head socket. All
All right, once the adapter plate is installed, you can throw the MAF sensor on there, line up the holes on the MAF with the holes on the adapter plate, and grab these smaller uh, Allen head bolts in the kit. Again, that same gunmetal color, and you'll need a two millimeter Allen key to tighten these down. All right, once you have the MAF sensor taken care of, you can flip the intake tube over. We're gonna be installing this support bracket here. That's gonna be connecting to that bracket that we removed earlier. Now, in order to secure this, you're gonna be grabbing this little short, fat, stubby bolt in the kit. It also has a uh, flat washer and another crush washer, and you're gonna be putting it in this pre-threaded hole on the intake tube here. Now, to tighten this down, you'll need a 13 millimeter socket. All right, guys, our intake tubes are all ready to go. Now we're gonna tackle some of the stuff we need to do to our heat shield. First thing we need to do is install our weather stripping. Now there's probably gonna be a little bit of excess here, so you'll need a pair of snips to cut off the, all the extra. And when you're installing the weather stripping, you wanna line it up pretty much flush with the edge here. All right, once you get down to this corner here, where it kinda indents in and flushes itself out here, that's where you can make your cut. All right guys, next we're gonna be installing this little L-shaped bracket on our heat shield here. In order to do that, you'll need this little hex bolt in the kit, 10 millimeter head, and you'll need this nylon locking nut. And you want this pretty much oriented so that it's going straight down. All right, once he's seated, go ahead and tighten him down with your 10 mil socket and wrench. Now, as you're tightening this, it might want to rotate on you, so just make sure that it's still vertical. All right, guys, we've done everything that we need to do on the table. Now we're gonna install the heat shield in our bay there. In order to do that, you'll need these little threaded rubber grommets, and I'll show you where the heat shield's supposed to go. All right, guys, so our heat shield's being installed on this little base plate right here. We have some cutouts for our rubber grommets. Go ahead and slide those in like so, with the threads facing down. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna rest your heat shield on here. And depending on your truck and how it was manufactured, there may or may not be the hole that you need in order to secure this L bracket. If that's the case, pretty simple stuff. All you need to do is mark that point with a marker and we're gonna drill an eighth of an inch pilot hole Then we're gonna tap this with a sheet metal screw. All right guys, now we got our hole drill, we're all good to go. Now in order to install the heat shield, you're gonna be grabbing these large bolts in the kit. They're the largest bolts, pretty easy to identify. Go ahead and throw the heat shield in place. Get both of these bolts hand tightened, but leave them loose enough so you can get a little bit of flex on this plate here so we can line up that hole on our L bracket. And we're gonna be securing this with this little uh, self-tapping screw in the kit. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver for this. Now you just want to get this started. Probably going to need some power tools to get this thing zipped down all the way. All right, once that self-tapping screw's tightened down, you can tighten down both of those hex bolts. You'll need a 14 millimeter socket. Now, one thing to take note before we leave our heat shield here, Normally, this is where you'd be replacing this factory coolant line with a longer one in order to accommodate the heat shield and our new filter. Now, our truck actually has a new coolant line in here that's long enough, so we don't have to worry about that. But if you did have to replace your coolant line, you just gotta pop these two brackets here with some pliers, fit the new line in place, and you should be good to go. All right, now we're gonna install the rubber coupler on our throttle body, and that's gonna secure our new intake tube. You're gonna need these band clamps on here. These have little eight millimeter fasteners, so you'll need an eight millimeter socket. Okay, now we're gonna throw our intake tube in place. When you do this, you wanna make sure you line up this bracket with those factory studs on this bracket down here, just above the driver's side head. Once you got both of those holes lined up, press the bracket in place and simultaneously press the intake tube into the little rubber grommet that we just installed on the throttle body. All right, once the intake tube is seated fully, you can tighten down your band clamp on the throttle body.
All right, our tube's secured to our throttle body. Now we're gonna reinstall those factory nuts on these studs for this support bracket. Full disclosure, guys, I probably imagine that the reason they told you to put that nut back on this bottom stud here is to kind of help align this bracket, but I actually found that it rests flush against here without anything underneath it, like a spacer or the factory nut. So we just took that off, and we're just gonna put those back on the studs, securing it normally. Now you probably won't be able to get any power tools down here with the fan shroud, so you'll just need to use a standard ratchet. All right, guys, now we can finally throw our filter in place. You have to set the filter up first, though. You have this little plastic coupler on the inside with this large band clamp. Just seat those together, tighten them down, and then throw your other rubber coupler on there with the two remaining band clamps. Okay guys, our intake is technically installed. We just have a few more things to do. We have to tackle our crankcase blow-by here. We're actually gonna be removing this factory piece entirely. It's the same fitting on the head side, so just pop that little green retainer. You should be able to pop this line off. All right, once you've got that out of the way, you're gonna be grabbing this smaller hose in the kit. It's a little long, so you can actually cut it to about 16 inches. Just fit it on this fitting here on the head. and then you can press it into this barb fitting on the intake tube. Now when you put the barb fitting on the intake tube, again, it's plastic threads, so you can pretty much just hand tighten it, and you should be good to go. All right guys, something to take note, you do have another port on the intake tube on the driver's side. This is gonna be for your factory uh, brake booster hose. If you don't have one, then just plug it with this plastic threaded cap. Then all you gotta do is plug in your MAF sensor, and that'll wrap up this install. All right guys, so as I said, super simple install. Go ahead and turn the key over. You should be good to go. No tuning or additional work required. That'll also wrap up my review of the K&N Series 57 FIPK colder intake fitting your 2004 to 2008 5.4 liter powered F-150. I'm Travis, thanks for watching. And for all things F-150, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.